Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday evening. I am so excited for tonight's show. I first saw Robin McRae on with Dave Scott on Space Out Radio. That was the first place I saw her. And then I had to start Googling and finding other places and other interviews that she's done. And I find her fascinating. I find her story fascinating. I find her encounters fascinating. There's there's so much to unpack tonight, guys. So we have we have we have a lot of ground to cover. And Robin is completely open to all kinds of questions, any kind of questions. So I have a list. I have a list because I knew I would forget because I knew I would get like so into her story. And I think that you guys will too. So let me just uh, give her a lovely introduction. Robin McRae had her first encounter with the Sasquatch people when she was very young. She's had a close relationship with them ever since. She has been an active, uh, an active experiencer and habituator her entire life. Throughout the years, she has been taught by the Sasquatch people. She has learned many things about them as a people and strives to bring awareness in an effort to work towards conservation for them. And it is my greatest pleasure to introduce Miss Robin McRae. Oh, thank you. That was like the best entry for me ever. You are so sweet. Oh my God. Oh, thanks. No, I I, 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 I have, I'm telling you, I, before I even decided to do, you know, start my channel, you were someone that, cause my son has a channel too. And you oh, were someone wow. that, that I would kind of just, I would just kind of be like, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could have Robin on, you know, like I would oh, try to get him, but you know, but he's, he, you know, he's a different, he has a different channel and it's a different thing. And it's yeah. like, I, I, and I just, I was like, you know what? I am going to have her on my show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm very honored. Thank you. You are just the sweetest thing. Oh, I, I, really I haven't a normal person that has a very bizarre <laughs> life. I'm just telling you, that's about the way it works. But it's, but it's amazing to me that you literally have had these encounters, these experiences, yeah. um, you know, with them for your entire life. So it's, this isn't yeah. something like just got turned on or no, something. it's been no, your no, entire no. life. So yeah, it, it was just really weird because when it happened, when I was a, a very small child, I am a huge animal lover, hence the 15 dogs and <laughs> like 20 odd cats. But when I saw them as a little kid, they were all, you know, all covered in hair. And I'm like, oh, yay, another animal in the forest. And look at it's coming out and it's watching me. And I thought that was really cool. And then I'm hearing them talk in my head. But I didn't know that not everybody did that. Mm -hmm. And so that was always kind of confusing to me, you know, and then so, as I so got you, older. So, so you're hearing, you're actually hearing their voices in your head. Yeah. But I want to make something so people understand because a lot of people, I believe anybody can mind speak. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it, literally, if I can do it, a trained chimp can. Okay. It's not anything special about me or anything else. Most of us get mind speak and we don't know it. So the first thing is knowing what mind speak is. A lot of people think that you're going to hear like this big booming voice, like God's talking to you in your head. And that can happen. But there is a multitude of ways to get mind speak. It can be a thought. It can be a feeling. It can be a picture. It can be a video playing in your head. It can be the words. It can be things spelled out. Like when I ask them for their names, I can't pronounce half their names. So I'll say, I need letters, only I need my letters because their alphabet is different than mine or than ours. So, you know, there's a, a multitude of ways to get mind mm -hmm. speak besides just hearing the voices in your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, is, is realizing what it is. And I was a, a kid. I mean, I was a kid, you know, so I was getting the words and I'm like, okay. And then it turned into where all of a sudden I would just know something. From out of nowhere, I would just know it, you know, if one was upset, if one was hurt, or if they thought I was going to do something dangerous, they would, I would just get this feeling of don't do this because it's not safe. And it, 
you know, I had to figure it out. I didn't have anybody to go to. Like I didn't. Mm -hmm. And my parents were very wonderful. I was very blessed when I brought the subject up to them about, you know, Bigfoot. They just kind of looked at me and the Patterson Gimlin film wasn't really out there yet. There were no books about it. You know, I was born in 64. So, I mean, you're talking like in 68. Mm -hmm. They didn't know anything about it and they never said I was lying or I was making it up. They just said, we're sorry, honey, we can't help you because we don't know what that is. You know, I mean, they were honest, but they were kind, which right. meant the world to me. But then when I realized that things were actually talking to me and it would not just stay limited to the Bigfoot, it would be all the other cryptids. It would be ETs, my first ET abduction, I was four. Um, it would be the dogs. It would be the cats. You know, it didn't matter. And that's mm. a lot for a little kid. Let me tell you. Yeah. That's a lot to think that's, in. That must have but been extremely overwhelming and confusing for a times. very... Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I can't imagine being four or having a four-year-old and then something, you know, I, I, I just can't even yeah. imagine that. Well, the that, thing of it was, is I didn't know any different. Mm -hmm. So in oh, that yeah. aspect, it was good because that was my normal. Like my mm -hmm. normal was abnormal. Right, right. You right. know, I mean, that right. was what was so crazy about it because nothing normal for me was anybody else's normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like I would, I would like it to be, but it just wasn't. And so that's just how I grew up. And then by the time I got in my teens, I was like, wait a minute. Nobody else is talking about these things. Nobody's, uh, you know, nobody's talking about hearing them in their head. So I just went quiet. And then when I got, I can remember, in fact, I just talked to a school friend of mine the other day, her and I grew up mm -hmm. together and she's just an amazing human being, had so much fun with her. And we hadn't talked in a, many, many years. And she saw the, the ad and the promo for the documentary and I made a comment on it. So I messaged her and I was like, listen, you know, and she said, you never said a thing. Was this going on back then? And I'm like, well, yeah. You know, don't you remember we'd all go over to such and such house? Yeah, they were out in the woods back there. And she's like, you never said a thing. <laughs> I said, no. And it wasn't that anybody told me not to say anything. I just thought everybody's going to think I'm nuts. Right. Because obviously nobody else is seeing what I'm seeing. Have you, you met know? anyone else that... Um... That can, that has this ability or something similar to what you have, or oh, yeah, that you go there's through? thousands of people that, like I said, I'm yeah. not anything, you know, extraordinary. I'm just a weirdo, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my favorite weirdo. I'll tell you, no, I'm a weirdo we, too. So you know, join the weirdo. You and I are club, gonna have so. a lot of talking to do. Um, oh yes, yes. But you know, that was just my life. And it didn't limit it to the dogma or to the Bigfoot. There was the dogma and they were around, you know, my mom's like, well, when you were a kid, you used to talk about these, what we thought were imaginary friends, you know, and she's describing them. And I'm like, no, that was Bigfoot and dogma. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And it, when I got in my twenties, I had a real good friend of mine that was over all the time. And then she started experiencing or seeing what I was seeing. And she's like, this stuff really exists. And I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And her oldest boy a few years ago messaged me and he's like, Aunt Robin, I got to ask you a question. And I said, what, sweetie? And he's like, it was all real, wasn't it? I said, what? <laughs> he said, all of it. It was real. It wasn't a dream. It was all real, wasn't it? Yeah. And I said, well, what are you talking about? He said, those things that look like monkeys that were this bigger than we were <laughs> running around your front yard. And I'm like, yeah, well, those are kind of real. <laughs> <laughs> You know? Oh my gosh. Well, you know, I, I, I've, I've, I can't, I cannot say that I've, that I can 100% sure say that I've had mine speak. Although I do, when my son and I go out, we, you know, I, I always, first of all, we always, we believe wholeheartedly in the utmost respect and we let them know that we're there to yep. learn about them, to be open to an interaction, if they're willing to have an interaction. Well, they said they tried twice to mind speak with you. Really? Yeah, one just popped in. We tried to talk to her twice, but she didn't respond. <laughs> I got chills right now. I, there's been a couple of times, two times, when I, <laughs> thought, said, when I thought that a thought came to me, just a thought though, for some reason, I've been, I've been, I've been listening though for a voice, right? So it's that's not always the voice. maybe, so that's you know, maybe why 
I yep. didn't respond. And, and, and yeah, yep. I always say to them that, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm open to an interaction if they're willing to, you know what I mean? Like, okay, I well, this one's name is Shablina and you're going to have to write it down. Cause once I give everybody their names, I'm not the one that's supposed to have the name you are. So they don't always let me remember it, but it's Shablina okay. or shy S H I B L I S H I B L I L I N A or I A. Sorry. I said a, and they're like, I a, <laughs> <laughs> awesome yeah very light tell hand colored yeah <laughs> it's i know my son know. i know my son is in the chat right now i think he is anyway and 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 it and and, and it's interesting because i had saw um i saw one like from here up just mm -hmm. just from here up and like and i tell everybody i mean it human. I mean, it, it looked human. It didn't Absolutely. look any, you know, looked human. And, and it was like a, like a, an, an auburn -y color kind of blondie or auburn, auburn. So, and I, and I, and I also had, it, it didn't look, it, it, it didn't look like huge. It was just maybe seven and a half, seven, seven and a half feet. So tall. Yeah. And, and it was, uh, it, you know, I don't know. It was, but it was, yeah. it was just for a moment, you know, I saw it and then it, it locked eyes with me and then whoop, <laughs> he just, let, yep. he just dropped down, you know, like, yeah, so. you know, it's, but, it's funny how they work, but yeah. Um, she said that she's tried to talk to you twice, but you didn't know what you were getting. And the thing is, it's different for everybody. It's not like it's supposed to be one. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing with all of this paranormal side to them. Um, it's, it hits everybody differently. So you have yeah, like a I basis mean, to go by, mm -hmm. but don't be so structured that you miss other things because of it. Now with MindSpeak, right. there's a million different ways to get MindSpeak. I'm able to get a, pretty much all of them, but that's just me. You know, not everybody can. A lot of people can. Like I said, I'm not anything special, trust me. But, you know, I'm one that can get all of them. Other people get them different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, my mm -hmm. husband is mm -hmm. speaks telepathic as well. And he's brilliant. There's him and a friend of mine that are probably two of the best telepathic communicators I've worked with. I've had and on a few. I've, I've, I have had on several occasions whenever mm -hmm. we've gone out. You know, if I come up against something or, you know, if, I, I, if I'm coming into an area or I push too far, there's been a few times in different areas that I've been in where I just get this like wall. And it's not necessarily a... a, a anything other than a, I just know that I'm not supposed to go past this. Like this is, yeah. this is it. Here's Does your it line. Make you apprehensive when you hit that line. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's what yes. they call the wall of fear. And what that is, ah. that's a projection of their energy and emotions. Cause I can feel of, it. I physically yeah. feel oh, absolutely. The, absolutely. The, the, the push. They call it the wall of fear and they can project any emotion mm. or anything they want on you. It's not a zapping. Okay, but it is an emotion in a subliminal message and it's done through energy and they can let you come so far and then they have that wall right there. Which it makes sense for me because it's hap every, uh, like mm -hmm. almost every time I've been out, there has always been there was an interaction a few weeks ago and I was feeling um because I am like sensitive, intuitive. Um, yeah, I'm an I'm an empath. Yeah. So. I was, it, I was feeling ang this anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. But I knew it wasn't my anxiety. And I was explaining right. it to my, I knew that it wasn't me and, and it wasn't coming from anything I was feeling around me because I wasn't feeling scared or anything like yeah. that. But I felt an anxiety because I, I felt like they were, they were, they started kind of like throwing rocks at us, right? So little pebbles at first and then they got a little bit bigger <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. okay guys, it's, 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 we've overstayed our welcome and we need to go. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. We had a female, um, we used to call her Betsy. I don't know. I never did find out what her name was. We, <laughs> excuse me. We just called her Betsy and she had a baby 
And at the back of the property, we had this one area that was really low and it would water would pile in it. And it had all these huge reeds in it and all this tall grass in it. And I knew they used to put the babies in there because I'd walk around back there all the time. And I just always, every time I, I read energy, I'm an empath. I do energy work. I do healing work. I do all that stuff. And every time I'd walk by it, the energy from it was babies. And so I knew they were there. And mm. we had... Igor had come to visit and somebody else had come with him. And I told him, I said, I don't care. They were going to camp out at my house. I said, I don't care that you're here. I hadn't anticipated this other person, but that was fine. But I don't want you out in the woods unless I'm with you because they don't know you. By that point, they knew Igor, but they didn't know this gentleman. And he's like, okay, okay. So I went in the house to start making dinner for everybody. And all of a sudden I get this intense fear mm. and I knew it wasn't mine and instantly I knew somebody had, was close to the baby it's like I knew the whole story that guy was out there he was walking around he was walking near the babies and the mom was in panic mode so mm. I went running out and I never she never said a thing but I felt it and when you feel it you get the whole story and so I went running out there and I said, you know, where's such and such? And they said, I don't know. He just kind of disappeared on us. We don't know where he went. And I'm like, I know exactly where he's at. So I <laughs> hightailed it back to where all the tall grass and the reeds were. And there he was. And I'm like, I told you not to be back here unless I was with you. They don't know you. Like, you don't get it. I, I don't mm -hmm. let complete strangers. I was very careful who I allowed there, just as I do now. Right. And we're in the process of looking for a house to move back to Michigan. I mean, I've got a ton of activity here, but I, I will then when I move to. And I do the same thing. I'm very cautious with who I let around them. If it's not safe for them, it doesn't happen. And, you know, I had let this gentleman come because it was somebody that Igor knew. And I thought he'd be fine. And he absolutely terrified her. Needless to say, he was never allowed back. Right, right. Yeah, I mean especially when you, you gave him the warning, you were like, Hey, well, yeah, don't, and, like, you know. and I did tell him, I said, listen, yeah. you know, it's not like we have one or two around here. None of them live here, but they come here daily. Mm -hmm. And at one point in time, I'd started getting a journal of all, and I would write down in it, male, female description, hair color, body type, because everyone is different. There are no two of the same, just like there isn't with us. I had over 60 different individuals come through there. Not all wow. at one time, but do they come up to you? Do they come, do they literally come to you and, and well, like and, people always and ask me, can you have... call them in? No, I don't call them in. I can't, I've never really tried, but I, they aren't going anyway, but cause they think it's a trap when you do it. I mean, I'm sure there's some people out there that can do that. I, it's not me. Um, mm. I have come up against them. The closest I've gotten was probably toe to toe with the 14 footer. Um, I've had one in my front yard come up during the night and actually touch my arm. I had another one in Michigan that came up 10 feet for me, you know, out of the woods and just kind of stood mm -hmm. there and looked at me. And then he, he cloaked when my son came running. But so, yeah, I've mm -hmm. had, I have had those encounters. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of them where they like to think it's funny and come up behind me. You know, they like my hair. I have very <laughs> thick hair. Right. And, they, you know, they do the patent of the head thing and, you know, and they like that real well. Um, but they'll do that cloak. They do that counting coup. So do they have a, a are they like, do they have like a, a collective consciousness as some yeah. people have thought, you know, and mm -hmm. theorized. So yeah, they do absolutely. have a collective consciousness. So, so are they in contact with each other throughout the country, throughout the world? Oh, yeah. Through, yeah, they, can. <laughs> they are talk to the ones out in Siberia. The only problem so. I have with them is they are really very much into um, wanting to talk to me in Russian. And I'm like, okay, go back to English because I can't do the Russian. <laughs> Igor's tried for years. I suck at it. I admit it. I'm <laughs> not good at it. I'm never going to be good at it. So, yeah. So, so do they have any other, I mean, besides like having that telepathy gift or ability are there any other types of abilities that they have oh yeah the list of abilities is so intense um levitate shape shift there's the cloaking there is um god i'm trying to think of anything they really can't do 
Like, so is the I, cloaking yeah. is is the cloaking does the cloaking happen because they're vibrating their frequency? Yeah, like their their frequency is vibrating when, like at a very. Well, Pat, my husband Pat and I have asked multiple different individuals, mm -hmm. and they always say the same thing: we bend the light. So I had to pin them down and say, mm -hmm. okay, how are you bending the light? And they are, they're raising their frequency, they're raising their vibration, and that's how they do it. Um, there's a lot of talk about, you know, when they do this, do they go into a portal? And I think at some point in time, they may do that. That is not mm -hmm. primarily what they do. Perfect example. My neighbor, God bless this woman, the stuff she puts up with. Um, when I met her, I'd only known her three months, and I was like, I got to have a talk with her and mm -hmm. let her know when she sees them. You know, because they're going to show up. I'm here. They're going to show up. Right. And it was like, I didn't want her getting a gun out after them. You know, I'm in the South right now and they're out, you know, I didn't want anybody right. getting shot. And I didn't want, the thing is, is even if you get a shot at them, now you've started a war with them and that's not anything you want to do. And so I was really, you know, more for her safety and theirs. I just was like, I know you don't have to believe me, but this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, you know, I actually do believe you. And I said, you do? I said, you don't even know me. And she's like, no, but there's something about you. She said, I, I believe it. And so about six months later, her grandson came over and said, Miss Robin, Miss Robin, come talk to grandma. And I said, are you all right? Yeah, but man, I looked in your backyard and there was this thing and it was, you know, bigger than a person, but it looked like a gorilla and it was walking across your backyard. I said, are you okay? And he said, yeah, I'm fine. It didn't try to hurt me. It just looked at me and kept walking. He said, um, but then his uncle saw one the next night. And it was a different one than what he had seen. And I guess I went over there and I talked to his grandma. And she said, yeah. She said he was outside. He was throwing brush into the weeds. And it, we're all, we live back in the woods. And he was throwing brush out in the woods. And he heard a growl and he looked up and this thing was just towering above him. And he said it was all, you know, black, jet black hair everywhere. And he didn't know what to do. And he said, then it was gone. And he ran in the house and told his mom, he's like, I want to, I need the gun. I need the gun. And she said, wait a minute for what? He said this thing. And she said, nope. Robin said, no guns. We don't want that war. You know, we're not doing that. He, she's like, are you okay? And he said, yeah, it didn't try to hurt me. It made a growling noise, but it didn't try to hurt me. So when I saw him, I said to him, I said, so I just am curious, did it go down onto all fours and leave or on two legs? Because they can do both. And he said, that's the craziest thing. Like, there's all that brush back there. He said, I should have seen brush move. He said, man, this thing is so fast. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, it was just gone. Like, in a second, it was gone. None of the brush moved. Nothing. He said, I never saw it on four legs. I never saw it on two legs. It was standing mm. there. It growled and then it was gone. And wow. I said, he said, but none of the brush moved. How it moved that quick without moving the brush, I don't know. I said, because it never left. It closed. <laughs> and he said, oh my God. He said, I'm so glad I didn't know that, that then. <laughs> but there's a difference. They do the cloaking and they do the shimmer. The shimmer looks like the predator where you look like at that gelled water type effect. Mm hmm. And that's the shimmer. When they cloak, they are literally 100% transparent. You don't see anything. Now, um, you can feel, you can still feel their energy because the energy doesn't lie. And, oh, okay. yeah, and that, I, I did that, like, when we did the documentary. I do that a lot. But you don't see that they're there. And it's very disconcerting because Pat and I will look out in our front yard and you would think if they're going to do it, the whole body would cloak at one time. And that's not necessarily the case because every now and then we'll see an arm or a leg going across the front yard. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I, I, we've had and it's not over. Halloween. <laughs> no. And we've had friends over there and they're like, I swear an arm just floated across your yard. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, we had this one male in Michigan and I had, that's I used great, to put food out for him every night, which I, I don't tell people to do that. But again, I was by myself. I didn't have anybody for guidance. So, you know, I make mistakes too. Mm -hmm. The group I had was super nice. I never had a problem. Like if you want to go out and leave them a gift, but as long as you're not doing it on a regular basis every day, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. I was feeding them every day and you're never going to get enough food out there to feed them anyway. <coughs> Sorry guys. I've got terrible allergies today. And so I would put food out. 
But then I'd lug it all the way out in the woods. And as more came, I was putting more and more food out. Oh my goodness. Like, I was spending like $200 a week on food for them. And Whoa. It, would, it wouldn't fill everybody up. I mean, you know, look, they've got a huge yeah. appetite. But I got tired of taking them to the back of the property because at two o'clock in the morning, every night, like clockwork, they were outside my window knocking and pounding on the house for me to go out and sit with them. And I would be the crazy person out there in my slippers and pajamas, no flashlight, no nothing, sitting out in the woods with the Bigfoot. And so I thought, why am I lugging all this crap out there? If you can walk <laughs> up to the house to get me at night, come up here and get your food. Like, I'm not your slave. <laughs> what the heck? So I put it, I made the eating area off my house about 75 feet. And I had buckets that were hung up there with these snaps and I had all kinds of contraptions. So I knew it was not other animals getting it. Mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. this one, it was a rabbit cage that was welded. You couldn't get into it. And the door, it only had one door. The bottom was welded on it, had one door on top. And I got like eight snaps and put it all the way around the door. So you couldn't lift it up for an animal to get in it. And I would put the food out there. And one day I looked out there and there was, it was one that wasn't normally with the clan that was there. Huge male. And he had like the conial head on him and he walked in, he was hungry and he walked in and he was trying to get something to eat. Not a problem. Help yourself. But he turned around and saw me watching him and he cloaked and he cloaked everything, but the very top of that cone. And when he went to leave, it looked like a yarmulke being floating through the woods. I mean, I was like, good God, come <laughs> on, man. Oh, my gosh. That's great. A that friend is great. Mine, a friend of mine in Michigan, in fact, I just went out in the woods with her. Um, when was it? Last month when I was in Michigan. Um, her and I were coming back from doing some, going into a new area. Went down this dirt road. And there was all these trees, it was a heavily wooded area. And there was a black male Bigfoot walking on the outside of the tree line, walking up the tree line, but he was out in the open. And I was driving and I, I was driving her vehicle, but I stopped. And I'm like, Lord, Lord, look, look, we look over there. And he starts yelling in my head, stop looking at me. Stop looking at me. I <laughs> Cover your hairy ass up. Okay. You can club for God's sake. If you don't want me peeking at it, get rid of it. And why are you out of the woods anyway? Get back in the woods. So they they so all of them can cloak. All of them. I mean, yeah, but do all of them have all of these abilities or they actually kind of like but people, here, like Yeah, here's the thing. They all have that God given ability to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But and here's the big but. You know how we have Amish people? And some of them believe in using electricity. Some of them, you know, you don't use motor vehicles mm -hmm. and some you do. And each sector of the Amish, and I use the Amish not in any disrespect, but just it's the easiest way to explain it. Mm -hmm. um, but different sectors allow certain things. So gotcha. when it comes to the cryptids, they learn about their paranormal abilities from their parents. And if the parents are living in a clan that doesn't allow the use of it, other than telepathic, um, then they don't know they have it. So if you don't know you have it, how do you know to use it? And yeah, there's right. been a Makes couple sense. that, yeah, there's been a couple that we know of that grew up in a clan that while you could mind speak, they had no knowledge that they had other abilities. And then once they got older and they moved out and they were with, other, you know, Bigfoots, then they're like, oh, wow, look at, now I can do this. Look at all these cool tricks, you know? So they can, yeah, they can do a lot of things. They can go into being flesh and blood one minute and a multidimensional being the next, you know, the whole portal thing is real. I think I, did I ever send you the photos? I don't even know if I sent you the photos. You sent me, you sent me a lot of photos, but, but, but okay, so we've been talking that. for a while. So, but yeah, yeah I have, yeah. You yeah. sent me okay. some really, so really amazing stuff. They can go stuff. in and out of the portals. Um, they, if they want to get in your house, I've had one in physical form come actually get in my house and um, made a huge mess. It, it, this was several, several years ago, long time ago. He actually opened the sliding door, which I, I don't ever lock my doors. I'm terrible, but I don't. And he opened it. I had a bag, 50 pound bag of dog food on the deck. And I had went in to the grocery store 
And my kids were actually at my mom's house at the time. And he had opened the slider door and walked into the house. And I had wow. three large dogs that came running. Well, apparently they had to have known he was out there before he opened the door. Because when I got home, my carpet that was in the dining room was pulled all the way back to the living room. The dogs were hiding in the closet. He didn't hurt them at all. They were hiding in the closet. They had cuts on their paws from digging at the carpet tack. Oh my by gosh. the sliding door. He had gotten in. There was muddy footprints all over, but he like everything was out of the refrigerator on the floor and out of the cupboards. Everything on the cupboards was on the floor. It was a holy mess. And I was like, you know, I asked my, and I already knew they were out there. I mean, if you're hungry, just say I need food, you know, but he didn't. And I, I came home and I'm like, okay, now I'm mad. Like at that point I, I had nine children all together, but at that point I had five and I'm like, okay, I don't have enough work to do apparently. You know, if you want something and you don't have it, just tell me. I mean, at that point, I had chickens and they were taking half the eggs and I, they'd leave me half and they'd take half. Mm -hmm. And it was a mess. Now, since then, they really haven't done too much damage, but they can go into the house in a spirit form. Like you really haven't lived until you see one walk through a wall, walk past the end of your bed and then just walk on out the next wall. You talk about oh, wow. a mood killer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that would be definitely a yeah, mood killer for me. Like, I, 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 that would most definitely. <laughs> I would like forget about romance right now. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Hold that thought, honey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hold that thought. <laughs> yeah. No, we did have twice since we've been to the house in South Carolina. We've been here five years. Twice now we've had them um, when we were gone get in the come into the house and get wow. in where the pantry was at. And they didn't do, I mean, they didn't tear apart the house. We found muddy footprints, big deal. You know, I have 15 yeah. dogs, muddy, muddy footprints are nothing. You're, and, you know, you, listen, I know, but I know that you do go right. And you do help people that are having like absolutely. problems on I properties. With, yeah. I work with people you, all over the world because a lot of it. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Why is it even doing it? I, like I said, I, I'm in the car, so I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, um, a lot of work I can do remotely. Mm -hmm. So I can talk to people. Um, I store project. I can do remote viewing, you know, all those mm -hmm. things. So um, I, I can work remotely. I have gone places and worked boots on the ground type things with aggressive foots. I've done so that as well. So what kind what kind of work does that entail? Like if you if if there's first, you know an aggressive clan or a group that first out you you know you try to find out. I mean, rather than jump to the fact that you know they're being aggressive, right. I there has to know, be a reason. There's a reason. I mean, now you, you do have some that just hate us. Okay, we've given them a ton of reason to hate us. So there are mm -hmm. some that literally don't want anything to do with our people. They don't care that we're related in the genetic tree. They don't want anything to do with us. So, but then those ones generally are not coming around where humans are. They go off in these remote areas or up in the mountains or whatever, because they want to be away from us. And then what do we do? We go up after them, you know, and then they get, get nasty. So, and that's not an excuse for the bad behavior. It's just, there's always a reason, you know? So first what, what off, are some, I, yeah, what are some of the, well, what are some of the reasons that I've like, had people, I've had people that contact me and they're like, I, I feel like I have a problem and I'm like, okay, first question I always ask, have they physically, have they physically harmed you in any way? Nine out of 10 times it's no, it's, they yelled at me, they waved their arms at me, you know, and of course that's frightening. Don't, I'm not disqualifying right. that at all. I mean, right, it's right, scary right, just right. to see them, although we're frightening mm -hmm. to them to look at too. But I mean, it is scary. And I, I don't disqualify that for anybody. But if you look at people that are in the military and they're waving their arms, that means surrender. And also for them, it means, you know, don't come this way. Wait, or they're trying say that again. Yeah. Like if, if you see it in, in the military. Uh -huh. When the guys are raising their hands and they're waving it like that, that's generally a surrender. For And with the Bigfoot, when they do that, there's a couple of reasons. It's to get your attention to pull it away from whatever you're walking towards. 
like there could be a child over there. The rest of the clan could be over there. You could be having a, a, mm-hmm. a rattlesnake there, you know, whatever. They're trying to get that attention. The other thing is they're trying to get it across to you that you should not be there. But it is frightening. It is very frightening for our people. And I, I'm not discounting that at all. Right, right. But that's basically how I start it. Now, if I find that, you know, other things are going on, then I communicate with the Bigfoot. Tell me what's going on. I had a woman that got hold of me, wanted help. And of course, I'm, I'm not going to say no, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I'll help you. And she's telling me all these things. So the first thing I do is I reach out to the Bigfoot and I'm like, okay, you want to tell me why you're doing this? And they're like, because we're not. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, now I got to decipher whether or not your energy is going to tell me if you're lying or not. And I'm like, they're like, no, what about this? This is, this is what she's doing to us. We want her to leave us alone. We're not trying to hurt her. We're trying to get her away from us because she's mm-hmm. doing this, this, and this. So when I asked this woman, you know, it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, Robin talks to the Bigfoot. But then when they give me information that I would have no idea of knowing, like with you. And I said, she said she's tried to contact you twice. And you went, I have goosebumps. She did try to get hold of me twice. I would have no way of knowing that. We never had a conversation about it. No, no. So, and that's what happened on Dave Scott's mm-hmm. show, too, with Dave. And that tends to happen a lot. And so, you know, they're telling me stuff. And I asked this woman and she's like, well, yeah, I, I actually did do that. And I'm like, okay, but you weren't supposed to be doing that. You know, quit yeah. doing this. Like they're doing this in, because of you. And it's not always our people's fault. Some of them are just nasty. But again, our people, we have rapists, pedophiles, murderers, psychopaths, yes. just down and out nasty, hateful people, as well as wonderful people. There is good and bad in everything. For anybody to think for a second that these beings are all good or all bad is ridiculous. It really and truly is. It is ridiculous. They, you know, they have free will like we do. And there's good and bad in everything. I don't care what it is. There's good and bad in everything. And so you do have some that are good. I will mm-hmm. say that the good ones love in a deeper sense than we even can acknowledge. Um, they do what I, I don't, everybody calls it something different. I call it the love bubble. Um, they can project emotions onto you. And when they project love on you, you have to be completely inhuman not to cry because it's wow. that deep of a love. It's, it's deeper than we can even comprehend. But in the same regards, the other flip of the coin is the bad ones can be lethal. And you don't, you know, sometimes you just don't, you know, you don't, you, you just don't know. You don't know what you're com- you're coming up against. No. You don't know. You, you don't. No, the and, only thing- and because you don't know, there has to be, you mm-hmm. know, there has to be some, some, some guidelines, right? That, that yeah, people but should the thing think about. Is, they're really... There is guidelines, but there isn't guidelines because, yes, they are a human, type of human. Mm -hmm. Um, And I did work on the DNA study. Melba Ketchum, as much as everybody wants to hate on her, I didn't know her before the study. Um, I know her very well now. I will go to my grave defending her because I know what she did was true. I know it was right. I know her as a very honest woman with the highest level of integrity. There was so much crap put out about her that wasn't true. Mm. I I knew everything that went on. She's like a sister to me now. I didn't know her before the study. As far as that goes, I had no idea who she was. I contacted her. Well, I sent a message to her to contact me because the Bigfoot set got hold of me one day and they said, you have to help us. And I said, okay, what? And they're like, you have to get hold of the woman. And I said, what woman? And they said, on the study, she knows the truth about us. You have to get hold of her and help her. She's going to need your help. And I'm like, I didn't even know. This is how out of it I am. Like, everybody says, well, you know all these people, right? Not a clue. Okay. I'm usually yeah. playing around with the cryptids. I don't know half of the people who everybody think I do, thinks I do. And I didn't know her. Didn't even know her name or anything about the study. I found out through friends about the study. And one of them happened to know her. And I said, give her my phone number. Let her know you know, what's going on. And if she wants to, I don't want to stalk anybody. I don't want to be intrusive. If she thinks she wants my help, she can contact me. And she did. And 
I had been helping and I'm not a scientist, so I couldn't help with anything scientific. Although, you know, everything was explained to me. I saw all the emails. I saw all the reports. I saw all that. Um, and six weeks into it, she said to me, she says, you know, she said, you're the only person I've had contact with that has not asked me what the results are. Why don't you want to know? I said, I already know. I asked him years ago what they were. You know, the study lists them as a human hybrid because on the mom's side, it's human. It says unknown because there's nothing in GenBank to be able to tell them what that male side is. So the scientific study does say they're a human hybrid, and that's correct. Okay. What did they say their origin okay. is? So take what Melba got on the study. She did get it right. Put that off to the side because then what I'm going to tell you next has nothing to do with Melba. She did not tell me any of this stuff. This came straight mm -hmm. from them. I was outside one night and I said to them, I said, you know, there's so much debate about what you guys are. And I've known for years that you're not an animal. What are you? <clears throat> I figured they would know more than anybody. And they pointed to me and they said, we're human like you. And they pointed to the scar sky and said, and star people. So the reason that Mel my guess is the reason that Melba study didn't show up anything on the male side is that's where the ETs are coming from. And you're not going to get mm. ET DNA in any type of gen bank. Right. The government has it and they're not going to share it with anybody. So, you know, they are. Interesting. Yeah. But they do have their own culture. They have their own laws. They have their own alphabet. They can read, they can write. You know, maybe not like we do, but they can. And they have their own society. It may not now, be ours, but they have it. Mm -hmm. They can now, speak any language they want. They can. They have their own language, but yeah. they can also speak any other language. Gotcha. I mean, I'm, 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 <laughs> I, I, I am just... Okay, let me go to my list because let me tell you. <laughs> Pat was taking photographs before we went on air. He spoke him and his photographs. So he gets some really good ones. He does. But um, he actually got tonight, he got a dogman across the street from us. Um, and then he got, you can see the side of a face of a Bigfoot over there. Cool. Yeah. We're going to talk. I, I hope you're going to stick around long enough so that I can okay. actually ask you some dog man questions for sure. And okay. some other stuff too, but all right, I, I got to get through some of these questions, girl. Cause I, I just kept thinking to myself when I was preparing for the show and I kept thinking, what, what is it that I want to know about them as a people, as you know, just yeah. abilities and things like that. So I, 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 I tried as hard as I could to come up with as many as I could because I was well, like, well, I want to know this, but you've already I, answered like the first five. So we've already got five well, of them gone. So you know, <laughs> I am not an expert. I don't believe there's experts in this I field. Don't, I don't, and I'm not looking for I you to be an expert at all. I have no problem just saying, Hey, I don't know. Just say, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And that, and I'm totally fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. And, I, and I'm sure some of these questions you've probably heard a million times already, That's but okay. I got okay. I, I want to ask anyway. So, so why do you think that they choose certain people, um, you know, to communicate with like you, yourself and, and, and the other people that you, that well, you're aware of? Well, I think it has to do with, they, they like people that they, they call pure of heart. They know what you are in your heart better mm -hmm. than you know, really. Um, they're an excellent judge of character. They also, you know, some people have a higher vibration and higher energy. And mm -hmm. when I say energy, just so that we're very clear, it ha doesn't have to do with physical energy as far as how much energy you have. Like, yeah, I have health issues. I have chronic fatigue. So trust me, it is <laughs> that was the, uh, based on that energy. I would be zeroed out. But yeah, it has to do with your energy or your vibration who you are as a person, what's in your heart. Those are the things that matter to them. So do you think that, I guess what, I, I guess what I, what I, what I wonder is if they can, if, if, I mean, cause I'm sure there's, um, and I'm just going to choose like, Dr. Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum, right? And I and I'm sure okay. you probably even know him, right? Like I Oh, he hates you, me, but yeah, you know, that's fine. Oh, well, that, yeah. Me. 
but 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 I think about you know but I think about those people like people in his position people mm-hmm. in you know why not go to those people so that they can advocate and uh, you know be an advocate for them you know for because protection they know what and kind of people they are and I'm not speaking about Jeff Meldrum I'm not I don't play those games but so it really really has all to it do has with to do with what kind of a person they are Gotcha. Yeah, and like again, I'm not dissing on Jeff Meldrum. I know. A lot yeah, of no, no, no. Him. I mean, it's it's but, a fair answer. Um, it's a fair answer because yeah, yeah you know, no, you know, it's, we, they know what's in their heart. They know yeah. what's in their heart. They know because, the kind of people they are. Because um, there's a lot at stake, come, right? For them, oh, their lives are at stake. Their right, lives are at stake. It has to and, do with who they have it has contact to be, with. And yeah. I mean, it, there's a whole process. Are they mm-hmm. heavily involved in the government? Do they have government contacts? That sure. could hurt them. The government's been catching them and holding them prisoner and doing experiments and doing everything else and holding them hostage for years. They put trackers in them. They're hunting them. They're, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going on out there. And wow. so if it's somebody that might possibly have government connections. Then they're going to, yeah. Right. Now, so- I have contacts that are ex-government, some that are in the government, but are, aren't trying to do anything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, that part, I think I'm pretty well cleared on, but you know, if, if you are a organization or a person and I'm not naming any names, but that is giving information to the government or as far as that goes, they're mm-hmm. going to get within a hundred million feet of you, you know? So it does, it matters who that person is as a human mm-hmm. being. It, ha- it matters mm-hmm. what your vibrational pull is and what your energy pull is. It matters your connections and who you associate with, how you behave, all of that. So are they, I mean, is there like a, a general message that the Sasquatch people would want us to know about them or, uh, or us to, um, to, to know? I mean, several the, the ones that they usually get hold of Pat and I about is, you know, we're destroying the planet and it's not just our planet. They're living on it too. And mm-hmm. so there's problems with that. We were told, actually, Pat was given the message and then I, I verified it. Pat and I work with another friend of mine. And when it comes down to anything of importance or safety or anything like that, we verify everything. So when we get mind speak, we, we tend to, on the important issues, we verify Mm-hmm. We not only do we hear it, the three of us, don't, none of us will tell the other one what's been said. And then we all will speak to three different individuals and then we'll compare notes. So, you know, when we get set on a job, like I was sent out to a job in the Cumberland Mountains and, you know, we did a lot of verifying for that. Mm-hmm. Um, certain things you have to, you know, little things like, you know, hey, idiot, I need ginger. You know, I need ground ginger. I need turmeric. Right. We got a sick child or whatever. That's, I don't need verification on that. I can just go do what I got to do or, and they've taught me how to do healing mm-hmm. on them. So I do do healing on them. Um, and so, you Wait, know, they taught you how to heal yeah. them. Yeah. So, yeah. Some of this stuff, they have their own healers to begin with. Now this part, I, I can't give you an absolute honest answer on. I can tell you what I suspect. Um, mm-hmm. They have healers. They have used them on me more than once. I probably wouldn't be here. I know they've saved my life five times so far. Um, and two, two of those ways were because of illness. And they help Pat with illnesses. So they can do it. But a lot of stuff that they do requires one of them and one of us. I don't know why. I, I don't have an explanation for that. I wish that I did to be more helpful, but I don't. The other thing is, and this is my own personal opinion, they don't want to burn up any more energy than they have to (laughs) because everything is energy based and they have to have energy to do absolutely everything. You know, it's like they taught me how to open and close portals and and seal them and, you know, various other things. And it's all energy based. Everything is done through energy and vibration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the key to all of it. And you know, a lot of times in the healing stuff, maybe it does require one of them and one of us. All I know is they taught me how to do it and they'll say, Hey, you know what, this one's sick. We need healing. Or we have, um, one that's actually quite old and he's just the dearest thing and we love him to pieces, but he has arthritis. And so when he's hurting really bad, he will come to the house and, you know, or mind speak and get hold of myself or Pat. I'm turning the light on here. And oh, see wow. Oh, 
There you go. Um, there, is that a little bit better? Because it was starting to get yeah, that's dark fine. in here. Yeah, that's good. And so, uh, um, so yeah, that's a little better. Another thing and, I wanted to you know, know, I can I can heal remotely or mm -hmm. up close and personal. So, how do you think that um, we can, as us as humans, how can we start building a better relationship with them, a better you know, communication with them, like as a oh, people, a great question. As, Basically, as a people, what, what they're wanting isn't anything that's hard for us to give. This is what just drives me crazy with, with our people. They want to be accepted for who and what they are, mm -hmm. which is the same thing we all want. Mm -hmm. um, they want to quit being hunted and shot at, you know, they're not mm -hmm. a piece of meat. They are a part mm -hmm. human. They want to be acknowledged as not being monsters. People need to understand that we look just as crazy to them I'll as bet. they do to us. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean it, all it, comes, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. It all comes down yeah. to learning about them. Education on them is key. And they're not going to tell anybody everything. So if you get somebody that says to you, hey, I'm an expert. Listen to me. That's mm -hmm. the last person you should be listening to. Mm -hmm. because number one, they're never going to tell us everything because it would damage their safety. I mean, they're right. You know, that could be disastrous for them mm -hmm. and we wouldn't understand it anyway. Okay. I just turned 58. I've been doing this since I was a toddler and I'm learning every day. You know, there's no way to know it all. And they're never going to tell you all of it anyhow. So there is no experts and it's about learning as you go. Um, Mm -hmm. Learning what symbols mean, learning what behaviors yeah. mean. You can't look at it and say, oh, they're behaving weird. Well, they're not being he behaving weird for them, maybe to mm -hmm. us, for our people. But we need to put looking at things from our point of view and put it into right. their perspective. Mm -hmm. Right. So, like, another thing, too, I've always wondered is, you know, about glyphs, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I find that fascinating. I love so, them. I absolutely I, I, love them. It's all communication. Yeah. I did see a person one time put on Facebook, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the person, and I wouldn't share it anyway because I don't believe in doing that either. But they said, well, it's just, you know, they're they're beautiful. They, you know, they like to make things that look nice. They do it for decoration. And I'm like, maybe the babies, while they're learning, they might be a little bit more <laughs> decorative, but it's a form of communication. It absolutely right. is. The dogmen right, make right. them too. And it is, it's literally communication. Yeah. And I'll tell you, and I, I've shared this story other places, but I'm going to tell you, because I think you'll, you'll get a kick out of it. I have too many pigs and I have one by the name of Elliot. I love this boy to the moon and back and he's an ass. Okay. <laughs> his favorite thing to do is lay on his side, get his head, his snout under the fence and then flop back and forth like a fish till he wiggles out from under the fence. <laughs> yeah. He's an ass. And normally he doesn't go anywhere. He stays right in the backyard. <laughs> but he had gotten out one day and he went into the woods. Well, I'm in South Carolina. You go out in the woods and you're taking your life in your hand because of the copperheads and the rattlesnakes and the water oh, moccasins. It's just insane. I hate it. And so he's out there in the woods and I'm thinking, oh my God, he's going to get bit by a snake or something. And him and the other one used to sleep up on my bed. And then I got a new bed and they can't get up high enough to get on it. So they have, I have an attached garage that's turned into the, like the animal room. It has heating and air conditioning and everything in it. It's ridiculous. And so he has a pen out there at night and, oh, uh, thank you, Amber. And, um, he had gotten out through the fence. When anytime he's ever gotten out, he comes around to the front of the big garage door I lift it up and he comes in and he wags his tail because he's a cocky little shit. <laughs> and he, he just thinks he's so cool because he's like, yeah, mom, I got one over on you. Yeah, that was me. Ha, ha, ha. So he got out and he got in the woods. I couldn't find him. And I was in a panic. And I, I told the foots, I said, you guys, who's ever out and around the house, will you please look for him? Just chase him. I don't care if he scares little black butt. Get him towards the house. I went out there. He didn't come and he didn't come. I went out there and they had made sticks. And they took and made a whole line up the side of my garage to the front of the garage door that he normally went in at. And he, they put an X on the ground in front of it. Huh. Ground X's mean welcome. 
The Brown upright X's. ones mean stay away. Ground X's are welcome. And yeah, and he found he ended up coming in. He followed the, the arrows that they made all the way to that ground X and he went in the garage. But years ago, I thought anything, you know, this was a long time ago. Anything with an X meant stay out. Yeah. And at, at the time I lived in a manufactured home and we had the skirting all around the bottom of it. And they were, you know, every night they were up there tapping on it, wanting me out with them. And they, they got it. They didn't, weren't really destructive other than the one problem with the trailer, but like they would get into all kinds of stuff. We had a ball uh, that was magical. It'll never happen like that again, but they would take the skirting and pull it back. And then they would shimmy under the trailer. They would go into the bedroom and they would knock on the floor <laughs> At me, I'd knock back and then I'd move like four foot away and knock again and they'd follow me to that spot and they'd knock back <laughs> up again. And they would do this up and down the house. But it was pulling apart the skirting around the trailer. Well, in Michigan, you do that and your pipes freeze in the winter. And Sharon, the letter A, I believe there's been several people with different feelings on what it stands for. I believe it means friend. A lot of people have told me that they believe that it has to do with the clan leader. My guys, when I asked them, said no. They leave me the letter A all the time. They have everywhere I've ever lived. And the only thing that the Bigfoots have ever told me was that it means friend and friendship. So, oh, good to know. Yeah. So I kept tape hooking up the um, skirting around the trailer. And they would open it back up. And I thought, okay, I've asked, I've begged, I've pleaded, I've threatened to go to the council and it's still being pulled apart. So I, you know, I'm going to go to mm -hmm. their level. So I nailed it all shut. I put an X on the ground thinking that means keep out. And I suspected something was up because I heard a lot of laughter, but nobody said anything. <laughs> so that <laughs> night I'm trying to sleep it. And it was like Mardi Gras under my house. Like oh, it would boy. be free zone under there. Party. I get up the next, oh, they have a party at Robin's house. So I get up the next day and the skirting has been pulled back up again and only halfway around their side of the trailer. And I oh now I'm gosh. mad. And the X is still there. And they put another X by it. <laughs> now you're just being condescending, okay? So I said to one of the ones I'm really close with, I said, <laughs> What is going on? And I even did it the way you guys do it. And he's cracking up. And I said, What is so funny? And he says, Well, that means welcome. You invited everybody under the house. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. Never going to do that again. BYOB at Robbins this weekend. That was it. <laughs> yeah. This is the same one. I used to eat these things by Chex. They're called Nutty or Muddy Buddies. They're like a Chex cereal with peanut butter and chocolate in it, covered in powdered sugar. And I took the kids to school one day, and it was just a really, really rough day. And I thought the kids are at school. I'm going to go home. I'm putting my pajamas back on. I am going to relax and I'm eating my muddy buddies. I cannot help it. I, this is all I'm going to do all day. I had sat them on my counter. I just cleaned the kitchen and it was the only thing on the counter. I come home and they're gone. And I'm oh. like, I put them there. I put them there this morning. <laughs> and I, I searched that whole house, tore it all apart, could not find it. And all I can hear in my mind is laughter. Oh, and I'm like, funny. I want to know. Who's little hairy hands? <laughs> my damn buddy buddies. I go out in the woods to take them their food that night, and there's the empty bag. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's like a that's like a javelin through my heart. I'm telling and you, yeah, I, love the, I love okay, those. I love those things. Just, yeah, I love now those you're just things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't be a jerk. Come on, you know. So okay, so I'm gonna. I want okay. I'm going to ask anybody in the chat if they have any questions for you. Um, if you guys can put them in caps for me, that would be great. And while we're waiting on some questions, um, let's talk dog man. So, so what are they? What are, what, what are the dog they? men are a canine, human and ET cross. Um, canine, event, human, ET. Yeah, according, according to them. Um, there has not been a DNA study done on the dogman yet. I know mm -hmm. that there would like to be one, but nothing's been done as of yet. And if it has been done, it's not ready to come out. I'll leave it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, but according to them, they are, you have to, every, the ETs created a lot of this stuff. 98% the ETs created, the government also created some of their own dogmen. They, the other things that have created it 
is the Native Americans, there has always been talk where, you know, they have had input as far as to um, a kind of dogman as well. Okay. So, but the actual dogmen, it's starting to get dark in here and trying to keep it light. <laughs> um, the actual dogmen were first created by the ETs. The Evens did it, and then there's another group that did it as well. So that's, you know, like I said, the Native American side, I'm not Native American, uh, so I would never speak for them. What I have heard mm -hmm. is that they did have medicine men or whatever that, that did create some as well. But according to them, they are canine, human, and ET. And they have paranormal abilities as well. Um, your cat people ha are feline, human, ET. I have a photo of lizard man, and it's lizard, human, ET. Goat man, goat, human, ET. You know, it kind of goes right down that line. Wow. Okay. That, that, that's interesting. That is crazy, yeah. Robin. That's more than I interesting. Know, that's crazy. It's bizarre. Okay. Um, let's see. Amber's got another. What is their favorite snack? Um, just like with us, everything is individualized. So everybody's are different. Apples are always a big one. Pears are always a big one. Peanut butter is a huge one. And for whatever reason, hide your Parmesan cheese. They are swiping Parmesan cheese out of my house all the time. Parmesan cheese. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> like, just, like the last four years, it seems to be a big thing. Like I'll That's buy so it funny. the next day, there'll be muddy handprints on my fridge and it's gone. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. But primarily it's um, not a banana because a lot of them don't know what a banana is. I did try a banana one time and they didn't know what to do with it. They actually bit it off while it was in the peel and then they spit it on the ground. And I was like, sorry, guys, Michigan, yeah. you know, Bigfoot say I don't know what it is. So I got another banana and I peeled it like two inches down and put it out. And I went back and they had peeled the whole thing and got the fruit out of it and left the peel. Awesome. Awesome. How do they Enough. feel about other cryptids and big cats and coyotes? Um, they actually will use them for pets. And some of the cryptids will intermingle there. I've heard a lot of people say that the big men and do uh, dog men, the Bigfoot and dog men will interact. I have never found that to be true. I work with several people in various places around the world and they have all theirs have always got along. I actually have a photo of a hybrid that is part Bigfoot and part Dogman. And um, so, yeah, in fact, like I said, tonight, Pat and I were just talking about it. You got, you know, the Bigfoot and the Dogman in the trees out here out front. I've seen them all over my property. I mean, for years they've worked together. I'm not going to say they're all sitting around a campfire and holding hands and singing songs, but mm -hmm. they've gotten along just fine. And the one hybrid that I got the photo of accidentally got the photo of, she was with a Bigfoot. So do you so, think those high, are those hybrids that you, that, that we may see are, are some of those, what they call the Gugway or the Janusqua? No, Gugway are altogether different. Those are killers. Nobody is safe while those things exist. They will kill on wow. site. And they will kill our Sasquatch. They will kill the dogmen. They will kill anything they can get near. And are they also... You know, I don't know if like these are... E yeah, I don't know if those are ET or government created. Um, you know, I want to... I would love to say that it's the ET, but I come across so much stuff that the government's created that is so, so bad. It's very possible yeah. that they were. I'm not going to say for sure. I don't know. I don't have any proof on that one, but I would be more inclined to believe. They actually look like they have the face of a baboon. Mm -hmm. You know, like your dogmen, Bigfoot crosses have a teddy bear face. They have the little tiny ears and, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Gugwe, they actually have, if you go and look up a, a picture of a baboon, that extended rectangular shaped face. Right. That's what a gugwe looks like. I don't want to run into um, any of those. <laughs> no. Yeah, they're deadly. They're they're literally so, deadly. The only way you can kill them is the Bigfoots rip the heads off of them. Wow. Yeah, I've so, actually literally um, done energy work where I helped pin one down and the Bigfoots rip the head off of it. 
but I did it remotely. It wasn't here in my That's property. Crazy. I haven't had them come on my property at all yet. So Ruger Ridge is asking, uh, is picky? He's I think he goes over on Duke. Yeah, I think he goes uh, over to World Bigfoot Radio every now and then. Ruger's Ruger's everywhere, and I had a, awesome. I had a, I know, I I had a um uh, an interview schedule with him, and I got really sick, and I had to cancel. So I'm yeah, he's awesome. Rescheduling, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so. actually believe that yes, you can pick them up on EVP. Um, we did have some proof of that. I have a friend of mine that I've worked with for years. As far as helping him make contact with some of the Bigfoots and stuff, he's a super, super sweet guy. And the Bigfoots love him. And him and his son, his adult son, took a trip out of state. And while they were there, I had talked to him. And I'm like, well, they're there. They're saying this and this and this. And then they did this whole EVP thing. And they popped right up on that. And they were saying the same thing they had told me. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, definitely. And this is my, this, um, this is my yeah. son. <laughs> oh, I, um, if you have abilities, it's, I'm not going to say you can't speak to them. It's if they choose to speak to you and it goes by number one, um, what's in your heart. If they feel that you are pure of heart, a good hearted person, a good human being, then yeah, absolutely. But if you have abilities, you should be able to get, you know, some of them should talk to you, but I do suggest anybody trying to mind speak with them. Please, please, please learn how to read energy so you know that what's talking to you is what you think it is. Hi, mm. Duke. This World Bigfoot Radio, Duke Sullivan, one of the dearest people in my life. I absolutely adore this man. He's so good to me. Our Bigfoot's worst enemy, the Space Boys, the Deep State, or the Gugway. As much as I want to say Gugway, I'm going to say Deep State. Wow. I really am because Deep State the stuff that they're creating, the things that they're doing to them, torturing them, trying to crossbreed wow. them with Dracos. I mean, it's bad. It's bad. Gugwies are deadly. Mm. Your space cowboys aren't helping anybody. But I actually, my own personal opinion, and that may not be, you know, what, what Duke or anybody else thinks, but I am more concerned about what Deep State does to them. I think that could between be a, the one of us, a whole lot of like, things. I mean, yeah, my God, like, that could well, be. Well, like myself, you know, myself and Pat, and actually Duke to a degree because he's gotten really, they love him. They absolutely love him. They give him a shopping list every time this poor man goes <laughs> out in the field to do research. He'll call me and they'll give him a shopping list and he gets <laughs> everything on their list every time. They just adore him. But they use Duke for, and I don't mean use in a bad way. Mm -hmm. He helps get the information to them out. So he's what they call a messenger. You know, he's not really mind mm -hmm. speaking with them as of yet. I think it will happen though. But he does get their words out. He gets out what they want. They adore him. They absolutely adore him. And so. They love um, you, Duke. They do. And the Gugwe are deadly. They will hunt these things down. They will hunt humans down. They will hunt down everybody. But I really think that what goes on in the deep state and the disasters they're creating, not only for the cryptids, but the planet and, you know, hunting down cryptids under saying that they're trying to hurt civilians when they aren't. Mm -hmm. I, I really think that the deep state is the worst. I think all three of those are bad in their own right. There's nothing good about any of those. But I, I personally think the deep state is the worst. Wow. The, in the a black government, underground government, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I, I that's interesting because I've 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 been hearing so much about the deep state and all of these yep. things and yeah, I encourage everybody to check out World Bigfoot Radio because Duke yeah, touches on Duke all these some, really mm -hmm. touchy subjects that people yeah. need to hear. Shy and, away, and they shy a lot of a lot of channels shy they away do. from them because you know when you have the spotlight on you. And you have a show. If you're not well, careful, let me tell you, the government is not our friend. Like I've had my bank accounts know. frozen. I've had my disability frozen. I've had been yeah. shot at. I've had death threats. So yeah, trust me, they're not the nicest guy in town. Mm -mm. But you know, I will say this: Duke covers all these topics, and the nice thing about his channel, he vets all of his guests. So if they're on there, they're there for a reason, and they're yeah. legitimate. No, his channel is amazing. I didn't I love know his him in the beginning. I, I mean, I didn't know him 
Igor was on his show. I know him, but he doesn't know me. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I was here and Janice Carter was here. And Igor's like, if I'm going to get on this show, you girls are going on it too. And I'm like, well, he doesn't even know me. Why is he going to want me on the show? No, no, no. It'll be fine. So we got done with the show and then Duke and I just clicked. I, I think we knew each other from That's a previous awesome. lifetime. I think that he was my younger brother that tormented me. So now that he's older than me, I get to torment him. So let's talk about past lives. How does that, yeah. how, how does, how does that work? I mean, you just follow do the you, energy do you, trail. That's but do you, you get but it. do you, but do you really run into other people that you've had past lives with in oh, yeah. this reality? And in Surprisingly, this timeline? Yeah. Yeah. Like in the 1800s and 1818, you were a teacher, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I was a teacher. You were. Yep. Back in the little house in the prairie days. But um, prairie. yeah, no, I'm actually surprisingly, my husband, I, you know, when Pat and I first got together, I met him because I was supposed to help him with some of the stuff he was experiencing with the Bigfoot. And somebody I knew asked me to work with them. And I said, yeah, sure. No problem. We talked for two years. We ended up getting together and getting married. And, but before we got married, we were all, we were talking one night about this weird dream he kept having. He said, I keep having this dream and I swear it's real. And I said, you know, I've been getting one too. And it was the same dream. We actually oh. remember each other in this, in the dream. So yeah. That is so neat. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That is I'm telling awesome. you, Bigfoots have the best dating service ever. <laughs> the Bigfoot dating service. Well, you don't want to try online dating folks. Okay. If it, if you no, let's just, just don't do it, do it. Well. don't do it, don't do it, yep. don't do it. Don't do it. No, not safe. No, no, not safe at all. I'd rather mm -hmm. be hanging out with the, you know, the crazy dog men than, you know, going on a Yeah, and site. you know what? I've Lord. had such good experiences with the dog men. Like, I'm really jaded. Really? Like, I, I mean, think, have yeah. you really? Yeah, like, I really have. Really, really. Like, I, yeah. Because I just, everything you hear about them, it no, just No, they helped makes save me, me the one time. I had this guy that tried to cut, it was going to abduct me, put me in a cage and wait for the Bigfoot to come in and save me. And I found out about it. The Are Bigfoot you serious, Robin? Yeah. And oh I found God. out about it. The Bigfoot confirmed it. And he had all these cameras all over his research oh area. Gosh. And the Foots were afraid to leave because they believe the camera lens steals their soul. So they didn't want to cross the path of the cameras. So like oh in some of the older ones, they were a clan that didn't do a lot of paranormal work. They did the mind speak, but they didn't do the portals and all these other things. And so they were stuck. And so Whoa. I was like, you know, my friend is like, well, then you're definitely not going back up there. And I said, oh, yes, I am. I was supposed to do a conference. He was supposed to grab me <laughs> after the conference. And I'm like, oh, sure I am. And they're like, no, you're not. I'm like, if it's not me, it's going to be somebody else. So I told him, I said to the Bigfoots, I said, I want you to get up there. They had a tape of some of the Bigfoots that, on that property. And they were going to show it. And I said, there is nobody that can tamper with electronics like a big foot. Yeah. Nobody. And so I sent one of mine up there and I'm like, destroy that tape. And I said, we got to get these cameras down. And he had goons that patrolled the whole area. Like you couldn't get on that property. So I sent wow. the dogman up there and he called me the next day and he knew I lived two or three hours away. He's like, the most terrible thing has happened. And I said, what? He said, well, forget about coming up this weekend because every one of these cameras, I've got hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of cameras and they're destroyed. Like they're all mangled. There's nothing left out of any of them, you know? And he was just all freaked out. And I was like, Interesting. let me, I, I wasn't, you know what? I was, I was engrossed in our conversation and I forgot to look for questions. <laughs> oh, well, you know, you learn as you go around right, here. Uh, is are there any questions? Do you guys have any other questions? I'm not seeing any. Um, we're a little over an hour. We're an hour and fifteen. Are you good? To, I know you're in your car. Are you good to hang out just for a little bit longer? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. I don't okay. have anything going on tonight. So. Oh, cool. I love it. Love yep. it. So, getting back to the dogmen, are they? Um, are they self-aware? Are they, you know, like, are they self-aware as the same way that the Sasquatch people are, are self-aware and they're, 
individuals like, or, or do they have like a pack life or is there this? They do. Like I mean, they stay in packs. I mean, they, they do, but they, again, mm -hmm. you're talking about something that is dogman, human, and ET. So mm -hmm. where they have, you know, they are going to talk, they're going to converse. They're, I mean, they are talking and chatty like a Bigfoot is. The dogmen are much more stoic. I've only ran into two that actually were hysterically funny. Um, Bigfoot have a wicked sense of humor. One of their favorite pastimes is to do the belly crawl up to somebody when they don't see it. And then they knock their feet out from under them and land them on their butt. They think that's hysterically funny. And <laughs> I, I know people they've done it to. They are really bad oh. pranksters. Like you have no idea. They love to pull pranks. It is ridiculous. Uh, the dogmen are a little bit more stoic. Okay. Um, they don't like their territory. It depends again on the clan. Um, as far as roaming, I know some that will go five and six, seven miles away for food. They don't have a problem. And a lot of them will use portals. Like there's one that primarily lives in Texas and he be bops over here every now and then. And he hangs around by my friend's house and he'll be here. And he's obsessed with skunks. Like he'll take the skunks <laughs> and rub them all over him. So it's like this whole fleet of skunks is there, but yet the dogs don't have skunk odor on them. The house does it. It's just in the one spot he's standing. And then he'll mind speak, you know, I just came to say hi, you know, and then when he's done, he leaves and 10 minutes later, my friend will call and say, Hey, such and such just said that he came from your house. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, so yeah, it, it's, they're just more stoic. You know, I think the Bigfoots are more open to a lot of different things as far as, you know, the dogmen will go through the portals, but I think the Bigfoot do it even more. So, like, we have um, a wolfman here, or not a wolfman, a werewolf, and I have a picture of the portal open and his big gigantic floating head, you know, floating out of it. That's crazy. But I, I, I tend to see more of the Bigfoots going in and out of them. Yes, okay. um, they are connected with orbs. Orbs are their own little being. They are energy based, but you will get Bigfoot, Dogmen, ETs, other little small cryptids, elementals, um, dimensionals, and they'll actually ride around inside the orbs. The Bigfoots, you've, a lot of the time you will see orbs wherever you find the Bigfoot. They're all energy based. I know one of mine here plays with a white orb up and down like it is a ball. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely insane. They literally will do this. And it, just the craziest things ever. It really and truly is bizarre. Okay, we have another question. Matt wants to know, if I think I have a Bigfoot around me, how can I make contact? Um, first of all, if you're going to make contact, I would try leaving a gift out for them. A feather, a white rock means friendship, that kind of thing. I, I don't... As far as the mind speak goes, I don't have a problem with anybody mind speaking. I think we all can do it. We just need to know what mm -hmm. to look for. Mm -hmm. But I also, again, I really stress to people, you want to make sure you can read the energy because things, the bad stuff will come in and mind speak with you. And they'll tell you that, you know, it's your favorite Bigfoot or it's your Aunt Tilly or whatever. And they're bad because they lie. They lie, they manipulate, and they're deadly. So you want to make sure you know the energy of the Bigfoot that you're working with so that when you go to talk to them, if it doesn't feel like them, you just don't respond. If something talks to you and you don't know what it is, you don't respond. You don't make contact. You don't engage in it in any way because that way it can connect with you and you don't want that. So if I were this person and I was going to make contact with the Bigfoot around me, I would start by having a bonfire in my backyard. I would cook some food out there. Um, I would be laughing. I'd be having a good time. I would leave when I was done. I would maybe, you know, when I went back in the house, I'd leave some food out as a gift or I would leave a feather. I'd leave a white rock out or something along that nature until you get used to feeling what their energy feels like. If you already know how to read energy, then you can try to mind speak, you know, if you know what their energy feels like. Bigfoot and on. Janice Carter is actually a friend of mine. Um, she stayed at my house for year and a half, almost two years. We get along very well. And Miss Bama BF. Oh, Bama, I love her. Yes. Wherever you go there, you're stuck with them, girlfriend. They're not going anywhere. I have some here right now. I've actually, I have 
three clans and then half my clan from Michigan here right now with me and they are already excited about going back home when I move back. So yeah, they follow Aww. you. They just That's portal. So cool. they, if it's too far to walk, they're going to portal. So. Okay. We have another question. Claude Nall. Thank you, Robin, for confirming the information I've gotten from Sasquatch. Oh, I'm so glad I was helpful. Wonderful. Yeah. You're very oh. welcome. It's, it's an honor. Trust me. If, if I can help in any way, I'm happy to do that. Claude also has some abilities as well. So oh, cool. Yeah. He, he And the thing about abilities, they continually grow. Okay. If you don't have them, <clears throat> they Excuse they me. will come in slowly, but you will eventually get them. If you already have them, they're only going to enhance as, as time goes by. Yes, I've talked to, I've heard them speak out loud multiple times. Yes. Um Janice has heard them talk out loud as well. Um, when you do hear them, of course, Ron Moorhead, we know has. Ron's a, a wonderful, wonderful human being as well as a good man. He really is the best, um, knows what he's talking about. Um, when you hear them, be prepared. If you're going to wait for to hear them speak and sound like you or I do, that is not, they can. I'm not going to say it won't happen. Um, but when they speak, in our language, it's very different. They have a, a higher voice range. It can go higher than ours and lower than ours. We speak and our vo vocals come out of the top of the throat. Theirs comes out of the clavicle. So it does sound a little gurgled, but that's okay. That being said, they do, they can imitate anything out there, anything out in the woods, anything they've heard. I don't care if it's a doorbell, they can imitate it. And we have had, Interesting. yeah, <clears throat> when my kids were little, they were out in the woods with my ex-husband and now my current husband, my ex-husband. And he came in, he was out deer hunting. And I used to tell them he's going to be out deer hunting, go to the front of the woods. He's going to hunt in the back. And that's what they did. And he came in madder and a hatter yelling at me about how I scared all the deer off. And I said, what are you talking about? I haven't even left the house. Yes, you did. I know your voice. I've known you for 15 years. I said, then you're an idiot because <laughs> I haven't left the house and the kids are like, dad, mom never left the house. She's been cooking dinner the whole time. <laughs> and we found out very quickly that they were even able to imitate my voice. So the house rules all got changed that night to if you are outside and you hear me calling or if I tell you to go here or there, unless you physically see me, you do not go. I don't care if I tell you I'm going to beat your little butt and you're grounded for life. You will not get in trouble. If you don't physically see me, you do not respond because they can imitate voices very well. Interesting. But when they're talking to you and not trying to imitate something else, it is much more garbled. All right. We've got another dog man question. Is the dog man and the werewolf the no, same? No, they are not. They No, they're not the same. The werewolves, my understanding with them, and from what I've seen, I could be wrong, but this is what I've experienced. The werewolf does not have a tail, and it is much, much bigger than the dogman. Interesting. Okay. We've got from from Connor again. What do you think of Grisha? Is he talking about the one in Russia? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, a lot, lot to think about with that one. Um, I've actually, Igor, put had um, the friend that he works with on with them. Igor seen him in person and I trust Igor explicitly. And um, he didn't like hand them a phone and it didn't hold on to the phone, but they put the phone up so he could talk. And I was able to verbally speak with it that way. So, so yeah, Grisha is real. Grisha is real. The real Sasquatch. Drugs. If it's the one that he's talking about in um, Russia that Igor Borstov's working with, yes, he's real. Wow. Because I I've seen I've photos with him for the last few years. Because because I because because I've seen photos and excuse me because my allergies are kicking. I up. know mine drive me nuts. My allergy medicines uh, all of this it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know I question. I'm not gonna um, lie. I question some of the photos. However, mm -hmm. I will say this: Igor is one of the most honest people I know. And he is like family to me. He has would not lie to me about it. Yeah. I mean, he, he, when I saw the photos it. to me, it just, I don't yeah. know, just to me didn't look 
Right. And I felt I got the same impression, but Igor has seen him up close okay, and said that he actually does look just like that. So I'm taking Igor's word for it. All right. And like I said, I did talk to him on the phone. Um, he wasn't holding the phone. His, the gentleman that has all the contact with them was holding it. And I spoke into the phone and he spoke back and both my husband and myself have mine spoke with them for years. Okay. All right. Okay. We got another one from Miss Amber. Oh, I guess it's just a statement. Yes. The one I heard didn't um, speak. Yeah. Like me. When they mind speak, they are much more fluent in speaking a sentence when they're verbally speaking. It seems to be more broken English or any language that they're talking in. I'm not going to say that they can't say a sentence, but it seems to be harder. And it's more like you would see someone in a foreign country speaking English. It's that, that broken English. And I'm going to, Amber has another one and I'm just going to kind of, it kind of goes together. Um, the Birdman, uh, the ones that I've talked to, I guess, mind speak wise, seems to be pretty okay. You know, I caution anybody when dealing with any of these cryptids, be cautious, okay? Everything has, again, I sound like I'm preaching, and I'm sorry, forgive me, you guys. Everything has an energy signature. Your body is going to react to that energy signature. If there's something not good in that situation or with that individual, your body will react. Listen to your body, okay? So um, to tell you that there's good safe, advice. I've, you know, are they safe? I'm not going to tell you they're safe because all of these things have the ability to literally kill us. I mean, I'm not lying. They, they can. Does that mm -hmm. mean they're all bad and they will? No. You know, it's like you look at all these people that have handguns or rifles or whatever. They all have the ability to kill somebody. That doesn't mean they're going to. Right. So, yeah, you have to look at every individual situation Listen to your body react to that energy. If it feels off, don't sit there and play the head games and ask yourself, well, is it really off or is it just because I'm not used to it? If it feels off, trust me, it's off. Mm -hmm. Your body will react to that energy being off before your brain will engage and say it's off. Good okay? advice. Good advice. Miss Ida Bustamante. They do not migrate. They absolutely adapt to weather changes. Um, I will say this, though, they will go where the food sources are at. So you go like out in Colorado and they say, well, they follow the elk herds. Well, yeah. If your grocery store closes and the only grocery store you have is two towns over, you're going to go there to get the food. That doesn't mean you're migrating. That just means you're going where the food's at. And they will not move the entire clan. They will send out scouts or hunters to go get the food and bring it back. And they will also, like in the cold climates, they will store food up for winter. They also know how to grow things. Um, so, yeah, they know how to take care of each other. Do you think that Dogman and Bigfoot get along with each other? Do. I think that there's certain clans and um, packs that don't. Just like you may not get along with your neighbor, but other neighbors you get along fine with. Again, it's an individual thing. It's an individual. Well, certain clans may allow Dogmen to be in the same territory or to engage with the Bigfoot where others are like, no, you know, you find that a lot with, with our people, you know, with black people and white people. I'm a person. I don't care what color you are. If you're a good person, you can be, you know, red, white, and blue, purple, green. I don't care. If as long as you're a good human being, you're good with me. And it's the same thing with them, but it, it does depend on that clan and what, there's a basic rules that they all have to live by. And then each clan also will tweak those rules and have their own rules for their individual groups. Okay. That makes sense. Amber, she says, my issue is get is getting the dead people to leave me alone long enough to connect yeah, with the cryptids. Yeah, I've talked to spirits since my whole life. I, I, you know, once you mind speak, you mind speak with everything. Um, it is hard sometimes to get them to stop. You have to work on how to block them. What I will tell you, Amber, is they can't get, and this works on the cryptids too, and the ETs, they can't get through white noise. By white noise, what I mean is you want upbeat music, you want happy music, 
Um, you know, I know people that use Christian music. If you're not a Christian, you can use pop music as long as it's not filthy, you know, and it's, but it's upbeat and you want to turn it up and they can't hear you. They can't find you. And yeah. it, if, if they get through, it's much harder for them to get through. They have to really work to do it. Interesting. And what I would tell you is when they're talking to you and it's a dead person, don't engage. Once you engage, they've got you in that loop and they're coming back and they're coming back and they're coming back. You have the right to determine what and who you talk to. So if it's a dead person or somebody that you don't want to talk to, don't engage. Because if you even respond enough to say, leave me alone, they've already connected with you and you're stuck. Mm -hmm. You just don't respond. You turn up the music, you turn up the TV. I go to bed at night, I turn on cartoons or sitcoms or whatever, and I turn it up because if not, everything's talking all night. Do I know how to block it? Absolutely, I know how to block it. I don't want to burn out all my energy blocking stuff. Oh, true. Although, yeah, the other it's... thing too is get really busy. If you're really busy, it's even harder for them. If you're busy, you just idle hands, right? Is it devil's yep. workshop? Isn't that exactly? Yeah. <clears throat> Amber wants to know, is there a radius? Um, I don't feel personally that there's a set radius only because I know some that will stay in a very small area and I have others that really expand out. It's pretty much what that clan is. I mean, they have not said, let me put it to you this. They have not mm. said to me where well, our clan takes over eight miles because they don't understand that term eight miles. Okay. Right. They're not there. Our words are not theirs. Like time. We invented time. They don't have any concept of it. Time, time and space. What does that mean to them? Nothing. You know, our days and nights, they go by when the sun goes up and the sun goes down. When you, so when you say a radius for their territory, I don't personally believe, and I have not seen any evidence in my lifetime. Doesn't mean anybody else has them, but in my lifetime for me, that they have a set size territory. I think it's whatever that particular clan feels they want to spread out in. Amber has a lot going on in her pro on her property. She's <laughs> she has it all. She has it all. Let's talk about the Fae. I want to talk okay. a little about the Fae. So be careful of the Fae. Yeah. What you hear mixed things, right? Like you hear like, oh, be careful. Oh, okay, just give them little the cakes. Just, yeah. you know, no. like what do you here's the thing with the Fae? For something that is supposedly so little, they can pack a punch that can send you from here to hell and back. Um, <laughs> yeah, they can. They can go into any form that they want to. They are supposed to be a neutral entity, which is awesome. But the one thing that is pro more problematic than anything is something that tells you they are neutral. Because if it's something that's good, you know what to expect. If they tell you it's bad, you know what to expect. Give it neutral and it can be anything and you'll never see it coming because their energy is going to say that they're neutral. So you don't see it coming. And they are powerful, powerful little beings. Wow. So, and they can shape shift into anything they want. They can do anything they want. They really run their own realm and do whatever. Um, I ran into Faye when I was up in Pennsylvania with a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. We did not have any problems with them. They actually were sitting on the bank of a river and they opened up the bank of the river on the other side and showed us them. However, they had taken a shape of what looked like these little tiny miniature Bigfoots running around, which was absolutely hysterical or little Ewoks. They're quite cute. That mm -hmm. isn't what they normally look like. They can take on any form that they want. We actually got a picture of one standing up on a tree branch that would look like it was about three or four inches tall and looked like a little mini Bigfoot. Oh, how cute. <laughs> a little bit of people. I would not. Yeah. I Amber, do yourself a favor. Don't try to connect with Faye. <laughs> because, they <laughs> have, like I said, they are something that you have to have a great deal of respect for just because of the amount of power that they, they have. Now, have you ever, and, 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 and Amber has kind of gone through this a little bit, like, she talks to every, like, not that she talks to everything, but I mean, like, she's, you know, able to she's able right, to communicate right. with with just about everything and anything and so she has a bigfoot though that is on her property and mm -hmm. and he you know she communicates with him and he you right. know, protects her from what he can protect right from. so so can they do that like can they protect you from ets or bad ets or can they 
can they help? Yes and you no. know, they, I mean, I have guards that watch me all the time. Okay. It's like sentinels, right? Like, yeah. But right? the thing of it is, is they can only do what they can do. And not even two months ago, it would have been the end of May. I was abducted by the ETs. I have energy bubbles all over my property, so they can't physically get in. But what, and the Bigfoots are out here every night standing guard outside my windows. Mm -hmm. And that's all wonderful. But what happens is there are other ways for them to get to you that don't require them to physically be there. So when they're not physically there, what are the Bigfoots going to protect you from? Um, they can come in. Robin. A, yeah, they can come in in a holographic form. They can transport in and yeah. still not be in physical form. I've had them come at me before. I've had been attacked by them. I was put in intensive care by a Draco. So I'm telling you, yeah, they can they can protect you from a great many things. But I always tell people, like I have some that I'm extremely close to. I'm Again, gonna have I'm, Amber. I'm gonna have Amber reach out to you through fine. Facebook. It's because I really, McCray. yeah, yeah. If you I, go I, to Robin McRae on Facebook, you will never get me. Yeah, it's Robin it's an Haynes. Old account. I, yeah, it's, yeah, I can't get into that account. That's why I have Robin Haynes McRae. She is more than welcome to get hold of me. Yeah, get 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 a hold of her, Amber. I think that um, you and Amber have a lot of a lot of similarities <laughs> going on. So yeah, yeah. a lot that'd of be, stuff going on all the time. That'd be definitely definitely. Yeah, she's she'll she's she's amazing. She's she's helped me personally with a lot of things that. Oh, good. I was. We need more people that will help other know. people. Oh yeah, um, I'm sorry, guys. My I. Oh my gosh, my allergies are just like. Ah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, she's amazing, and and she will help anybody with anything, and just like and. Great. She's awesome. She's awesome. She's one of those people that salt of the earth loving, caring, just, yeah. and she's, well, like yeah. I said, she's more than welcome she's to reach awesome. out to me. I have no problem yeah. with that. So does anyone else have any other questions? And so do you have anything coming up? Do you have any conferences coming up? Do you have I anything? Don't. I just, I don't do a lot of conferences. I do, mm -hmm. um, the Georgia Bigfoot conference, which is generally in April of every year. And the same person that's doing that is going to do Tennessee Bigfoot, but he's going to do that one online because the place that we normally have it at, we weren't able to get this year. So he's going to do that online. So that will happen. And I think that's in September, September, October. I think it's September. And then I do the one in Nebraska. I really don't do a ton of them. Um, you know, most people don't really know who I am. So it's like, you know, depending on the ones that are, you know, maybe, but yeah. no, I, and I just did, Duke was with me. We had so much fun. Duke was there from World Bigfoot Radio. Mm -hmm. um, Christy Sci-Fi was there. And we all stayed at Harriet McFeely's house. She has the Bigfoot Museum in Nebraska. Fantastic. I recommend it to everybody. Cool. And she, yeah. Good she, night, Sharon. She had a I'm conference. Sorry. And so we were all three there. And we got to stay at Harriet's house. We had so much fun. And we will oh, be there next so cool. year. That is so cool. That is so cool. I, I've I've only gone to just some conferences here in Florida. I haven't ventured out of the state yet, but I'm yeah. gonna. I'm, I'm, I'm I have plans next year to do that. So yeah, so hopefully I can hit several of them next year. Yeah. Um, oh well, wait, Georgia wait, wait. Bigfoot is usually um, got one more question. The second or third week in April is the scream of a woman being murdered. Them saying, "Stay out." Um, yeah, I mean, they scream for a lot of things, but obviously they're not wanting you there if they're screaming at you. And it does sound like a woman being murdered. My son was probably 14, not even 14. He was younger than that. And him and his best friend were outside and they were playing basketball. It was nighttime. And the rule of thumb is nighttime. I don't want any of my kids out in the woods. I don't necessarily know that they're going to hurt them, but that doesn't mean that there's not a strange one that could come in or a dog right, man right. or anything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, stay up by the house and they were outside and they knew not to go in the woods and they heard, I don't think it necessarily means for you to stay out. They scream for various reasons. It's a form of communication to the other ones that aren't standing right next to them. They can speak telepathically, but they also will verbally howl. And 
it can be a warning to the other ones, like a lookout or whatever. But there was a, a female that was at the back of our woods. And, um, oh, I'd love to do that. That would be so much fun. And so she yelled. And my son and his friend automatically thought there's a woman getting murdered in our woods. You have to message me and tell me more about it. I would love to come. And they literally threw what mom said out the window and went running to the backwoods to find out what was going on. And she had yelled and that's when they took off. But then when she got done yelling, she was actually going to the bathroom and they <laughs> ran up on her while she was going to the bathroom, which did not make her happy. She chased their little butts all the way up the path. <laughs> the if she wanted to hurt him, she would have hurt him. And they came and I up absolutely and I, terrified and i said they said mom mom one of your friends tried to hurt us and i'm like okay so i asked her and she said no i tried to scare them they weren't supposed to be back there <laughs> uh any more questions for miss robin guys i think we're gonna wrap it up i'm getting almost to 10 yeah, but and and message me on facebook and tell me about that because that would be a blast yeah and i've gone i've gone hiking with connor if, 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 i don't even know connor like two or three times now. And I, I love Connor. He's Connor's like another son to me. Like him and my son are very, very close friends and they, yeah. And, and yeah, they're, they're amazing together. They're such good friends. And I just, oh, that's I, awesome. yeah, we met, we actually met Connor on our very, very first expedition that we did with the uh, Stacy Brown in, um, in my okay. oh, and cool. that's how we met Connor. And that weekend we were supposed to, you know, we were going to go to this, this weekend and, and we were both nervous about it. You know I mean? Hello, we're going yeah. to meet people that we don't even know in the know, middle of the woods someplace. It, really like, it sounds a little kooky. And so he was a little nervous and he said to, to Stacy, he's like, yeah, but what do you think? How, what, you know, what are the odds of us actually seeing anything? And he goes, Hey man, you know, Stacy's like, yeah, you will be lucky if we see an orb or two. So Matt and I are like, Matt and I are like, hey, okay, a couple orbs, we got this. A couple orbs, right? That weekend was insane. It was off the charts. We had every kind of activity known to man. We had Sasquatch activity. I mean, we found prints. I had a, I had a rock thrown over my head as I was walking back to camp by myself. We had paranormal stuff going on, EVPs. We saw a UFO. We saw like we heard uh, the audio we caught. There was something like throwing little acorns or something at our, at yeah, our tents all night long. What size they throw as to what yeah. the meaning is like the little acorns and stuff. That's just to say, Hey, we're here okay. and they're testing you. Yeah, because they're testing you to find out if you're going to turn around and pull a gun on them. And it's a safe way to let you know mm. they're there and keep themselves safe. Yeah. As they get better, bigger is more of an intent. The medium-sized ones are, okay, I am giving you a stern warning. I would prefer that you're not in my space. Back off. When they get to the big-sized ones, they're done playing games. Now it's yeah. like the epitome of someone yelling at you. Yeah. But in their defense, if you're sitting at home in your living room, and the door opens up and somebody you don't know comes walking in your living room. Is there really going to be anything that you won't do to protect your family? Of course. Of course not. You're going to do anything you possibly can to protect your family. And yeah. yet we crucify them for doing the same thing. When you walk out your front door, you're now in their world. Right. They don't understand property lines. Absolutely. They may understand some of their territories and some of them may cross through the other ones. But they don't understand this whole property line thing. You know, obviously they're not paying taxes. They're not doing any of that stuff. So they can't comprehend what that's all about, you know, and it's just 90, 99.9% .9 of the problems that we have with them is miscommunication because yeah. they don't understand what we mean. We don't understand what they mean. And so that's why it's important for the people, myself, Duke, Christy, other people, Amber, that have knowledge about them this is why it's so vital that it gets out it's not anybody trying right. to do an ego thing because it's not about if you have an ego you're already dead to them they don't tolerate anybody with an ego i don't mm -hmm. have enough self-confidence to have an ego you know i can tell you what i know because they've taught it to me and i've experienced right. it i don't care if anybody believes it or not you certainly have a right to question anything you want but i can tell you what i've learned mm -hmm. and i was taught by them 
you know, so I figured they might know. Now, clans. Yeah, are they, they maybe, might have a little clue, right? <laughs> yeah, but clans are different. Maybe one of the ones that told me something, another clan might disagree with that. That's okay. You know, not all people, we can't agree on anything in this country right now. So mm -hmm. obviously, you know, everybody's opinion is different, but they're really, you know, it's miscommunication and it's so vital. This is the only reasons, one of the two reasons that I came forward when I did was because they got tired of being people calling them monsters and not understanding that they are a type of people. They wanted that known that they have a language, they have a culture, they have laws, they have all of those mm -hmm. things. And the other thing was, how can we get along with them if we don't learn about them? And so it's an educational thing. Mm -hmm. And it, that's what it all comes down to. And it's hysterically funny because everybody goes out in the woods to go look for Bigfoot while Bigfoot's hanging out in the woods to look for us. You know, <laughs> it's like we're watching them watching us. So it's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, 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 well, you know what? Before I forget, I was going to ask this a little bit ago. So does my Sasquatch girl, does she, is there anything else she wants to tell me that I didn't pay attention to? She says, she's so funny. She's like, tell her I like red ribbon. I don't know what that means, but she's, she, she likes red ribbon. She wants ribbon for her hair. And yes, okay. they do put things in their hair. They will braid vines in them. They will put braid flowers in them. If they can find any ribbon or twine or anything, they do the braids. They do all of that. It's not. That's perfectly normal. She says she likes her hair. She likes your hair. She said you have pretty hair. Aw, thank you. <laughs> hopefully I'll get to actually, you know, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll pay much. much oh, they'll follow you home. I mean, trust me, they'll follow you home. You can live in the city. It doesn't matter. You can live in New York City. It won't matter. So, do, so does she, so is she around me all the time? Yeah. She watches you a lot. She says she goes to your house to watch you. She has a little boy, by the way. He looks like he's probably, I want to say, five or six. Maybe not even that old. Four or five. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you just <laughs> blew my mind with that one. A red ribbon. Red ribbon. She wants a red ribbon. Yeah. Okay. She's like, yeah. She said, I've seen people wear red ribbon. She said, I think they're pretty. Okay. Which All is right. cute. <laughs> red, red ribbon it is. <laughs> now, the, when you do gifts, just so people know, um, just an FYI thing, every clan is different. Some of them are allowed to accept gifts. Some of them are not allowed to accept gifts. When it comes to them, it is the gesture. So they want you to give them things. And but it like, doesn't the ones mean they're going to actually gifts, take it. Right. The ones in Michigan, I could give them anything. They had no problem taking it. It didn't matter what it was. Mm -hmm. They could take it. The ones here, it's really, really iffy. Like they'll ask for stuff all the time. And yeah, I'm that weirdo running all over town at eight, nine o'clock at night trying to get them what they need. And they have occasionally taken them, but they don't take them, you know, for something that hangs out outside my window and stares in the window and everything else, you know, they, I, they, the ones here just don't take it as easily. It's not that they won't. It's just not as easily. Hmm. Hey, Judy, how you doing, Dal? Yes. Yes, they've already found you. It's kind of <laughs> comforting, I got to say. It, it really is. And you know what's hysterical is when I moved here, one of the ones I'm super close to, you know, he, his mate is actually out of Florida and then she was in Texas. So then she came to Michigan because of him and they only met, be, I think probably because um, my friend in Texas talked to her all the time. And then I was talking to her a lot. And then I think that's probably how she met one of my guys. So she was in Michigan. She hated Michigan because she was forever hugs. I love her. She's the doll. Um, she is. But it was cold there and she would be so cold. And I finally said to him, I said, why is Sintai so cold? Like, I don't understand this. Make a bloody fire. And he said, well, she didn't ask for one. I said, she shouldn't have to ask for Make a fire and make her work. They do use fire, although certain clans refuse to use them, but they do have the ability to use it. They use very, very dry wood. 
And so he started making fire for us so she was warm. So when we moved here, she was happy because she's back in the south and she's not going to get cold anymore. But we got ready to leave and we're leaving the house. And I said to Pat, I said, God, I hope it doesn't take him long to get down there. And I get this image in my head of him sitting there and he's holding a coconut. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I'm not going to Florida. What are you doing? He says, well, I'm already here. He said, it's a little hot. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> so he beat it. me here, but he can't wait to go back to Michigan. <laughs> like I said, they have a um, wicked sense of humor. That's so good. I don't know. It's so good to know. It's, it's, it's nice to, yeah. it's nice to know and learn that side of, of them. Yeah, you know, they are. They can be because... really playful. They, their sense of humor sometimes is, you know, as funny as can be, it always is funny, but sometimes it's like, God, are you twisted? Do you ever, have you ever seen Snow White Bigfoot um, channel? No, I have not. And, and I, I'm really bad and Duke will, will own it on this one because I don't even watch I, me when I'm out. Well, well, what she, she, but what she has is going on at her property is, is she, they have them, you know, they come and they interact with her and it's just a video well, diary that she does yeah. like every, every month, you know, and she puts out yeah. what happened that month, you know, and I, and I, it blows my mind because they will come with things that are very, like, like, so I can, like, I'm trying to think that there's so much on her, on her channel. I'm trying to think there, okay. For instance, she had this, like a, uh, she used it as a table, but it was kind of like a crock, right? Like an ups mm -hmm. and she would turn it upside down and she had it using it as a table on her porch and yeah. on the, on the outside of it was kind of like, you know, maybe when the manufacturer made it, it was kind of pressed with the number 10. Like yeah. pressed into, into the, to the material it's made of. And she came out one day and in her chair, like her chair was a number 10. It was like a little charm from yep. somewhere they found it and it matched and they put it on her chair next to <laughs> this you know, and it, so, and they do those kinds of things. And a lot, a, a lot of the color blue, they like to play with a lot of her things that yeah, she has they do. out for them that are blue. You know, they really are quite thoughtful. Pat just had um, some minor surgery that he's had to have for a while and he finally got it done. And he came home, he was in the hospital overnight. I brought him home. He was sitting down, he got up to use the restroom and came back and here's a feather sitting on his nightstand. Which, Aww. I mean, you gotta know, we have a bird. Yes, we have a bird. But the bird is out in the sitting room. It's not anywhere near the bedroom. And it was not there when he got into bed. You know, so, I mean, like, they do these really incredibly sweet things. Yeah. And we had, when we first moved here, the cable guy came out to install the cable. And he came to the door and he told Patty, I'm sorry, I forgot all the wires. I don't have any of the wire harnesses or anything to set this up. He's like, I'll go get him. So he goes to get him. He comes back. The Bigfoots were in the bushes, scared the tar out of him. So he left. And he didn't leave the wires, didn't leave anything. And I was so mad. I was like, are you kidding me? The first day we're here and you're running off the workers, you know. Now I don't have these bloody wires to hook up the TV. So we go to bed. Pat gets up the next morning to go to work, opens the door, and there's this gigantic wad of wires pushed up against the door. <laughs> we don't know what they came from. They didn't have anything to do with cable, but they were there. That's funny. And this That's funny. And Miss Anita has one last question from the okay. night. Yeah, um, he's actually watching. He took a step back. He's not like as close up on top of you. I think before he was coming closer to the house. Now he's kind of taken a step back. He knows you're not feeling well. So, yeah, he's still around, though. And, yeah, the chemo will set you off a little bit. So it might take a while for that to level out because of how strong that stuff is. It can really kind of not – I'm not going to say it's going to change or alter your energy – but it definitely is going to make it harder for you to pick things up for a while and then it'll settle down. And it could be that because of the change from the chemo that he stepped back a little bit because he senses that change with you. So he's still there watching. He's just backed up a little bit. 
That's awesome, though. Cause, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, for me, it's it's very comforting. It's very, very comforting it, for me. You know what? The thing is, I would be lost without him. I've been very fortunate. I feel very blessed. It It's had, there's a cost. Trust me, there's a cost. But I wouldn't change any of it. I wouldn't change yeah. any of the craziness, the getting hurt, the abductions, all of it. Because it's all part of a bigger picture. Like the violent abductions, and I've had more positive than violent ones, but um, obviously those I would rather not have in some of the things they've done to me, but it's still part of a bigger picture. I've been able to see a world that most people don't even know exists. So I, I always feel like I'm forever humbled and blessed that I'm even able to be a part of it. And for me, I like helping people. It's just part of my nature. I'm a nurturer. That's what I do. That's why I had so many kids and so many dogs and cats. <laughs> so I always feel very humbled and very honored when people ask mm -hmm. me to help them because I feel like, you know, of all the people that are out there, you're asking me to help you. So I don't take that lightly. Right. And I feel very blessed. I really do. I feel very blessed. Well, I want to thank you so much oh, for being you're here welcome. tonight. This has it's been such great. a fun show. It has been a blast. Yeah, I I've learned so much. I learned oh, so yeah. much. And I can't wait to like well, I learn stuff every day. You know. So it's like nobody is above being, you know, learning. That's what we're doing for. And we're supposed to mm -hmm. share the information so that we can learn from each other. Like nobody knows it all. Nobody. I don't care who you are. Exactly. And that's and that's and that's the part that some people just sometimes they forget. You know, they get yeah, you know, they they forget that like, nobody knows anything. No, there isn't a hundred percent. If I've ran do. into no, and I've ran into people that Run are like the hills. Oh, yeah, I'm an expert, and I'm like, okay, may God mm -hmm. be with you. Eat a donut on the way, because I think that's a load of crap. There is no experts in this. You mm -hmm. know, it's not like there's a book that you can study or a textbook. And the books that are out there are just people's experiences. I get asked all the time to write a book. I'm supposed to be doing it now. Still haven't done it. And you know, it's one of those things that you learn as you go. Really 100%. and truly. Yeah. You know, well, thank you, Robin. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for having me and taking the I, time. I appreciate oh, it. I, I just, oh my gosh. I just love this. This is so much fun. And I, I, I it again. It was a, yes, yes. I'm going to have you back for a part two. Absolutely. Okay. 100%. <laughs> I, I have to, I have to. And then, and then maybe I can, I can invite my son, Matt, and he can oh, come that would in. Oh, so and, much fun. And, I would love that. Yeah. And because I know he has questions too, I'm sure. So yeah. yeah. I say we I'll bring him that. on. Yes. All right. We'll do that. We'll set it up. Thank you. Sounds good. Oh, I love thank you. you. And love you guys. I'll be talking. You so much. I'll, I'll be talking to you soon. Sounds great. I All right. To it. Take care. Thank you, Robin. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much tonight. I mean, I think I think we had 30 people or more in the chat all night long. Thank you guys so much. This was a really uh this interview was like a labor of love in a way for me because I I have wanted to talk to Robin for so so long and uh it took me a really long time to kind of get the courage up to even invite her on. So she was so grace gracious and she was very like, you know, yeah, of course I'm going to come on. So it was great and I I had such a good time. And I just want to thank everybody and I again, I'm still learning to to balance the chat <laughs> and my guest. I hope I'm getting a little bit better. Um next week uh, next week on the continuum, I will be flying solo. I will be here for you guys. We're kind of going to do a little open format. You guys have questions for me or for Matt or for our research about our research or anything that we do. I'll be here to answer all of those questions and we'll try and talk about and chat some about some topics that I've been kind of, uh, I've had in the back of my head for a while and I haven't had an opportunity to actually um, discuss them with you guys. So I'm going to take that opportunity for that show next week and we're going to, we're going to talk about some interesting stuff. So, um, so that's next week on the show. Um, quick little announcement. 
I've been wanting to do a second show and Matt's been wanting to do a second show, but we just kind of haven't decided how and when that's going to happen for us. But we have decided to now do, we're going to start doing a show together. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And he's working on all that, you know, all that stuff on the side and, you know, and thumbnails and, you know, he's doing all that creative stuff that he does. So, but we are, we're going to be uh, sometime in August. We're going to be uh, working on that together. Be so a project we can do together. And, uh, and, and then we're going to just, we're going to stream it to both of our channels. So we only, we both get to do a show um, for our channel. So it's, I'm just excited. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. He approached me last week about it and I was like, absolutely, let's do this. So I'm excited. Um, so we've got that coming up. We have, uh, there is going to be a Paracon in, uh, in October up in the Panhandle. Um, definitely keep checking the Facebook groups and they're, they're starting to advertise for that now. So we have that going up and please do me a huge favor, like share, comment and subscribe. And you know, if there's, if you guys have feedback for me, questions for me, put them in the comments, definitely I'll answer them. I, 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 even if it takes me a day or two sometimes, cause I'm, I have a crazy busy life, but I always answer. I always answer everybody. I, there's, I'm always going to answer you guys. So questions, whatever. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Duke, for showing up. I appreciate you so much. And uh, I love your channel. Thank you. And Dina. Thank you, Dina. Anita. Ida. My gosh, there were so... Judy. Thank you. Um, forgive me, guys. I'm so sorry. Bama. Thank you for showing up. Um, Gary and Connor and Ruger. Um, my gosh, there were so many people. Amber was in here tonight. Um, there were so many people in here and I, Iron Dog or Jackie, thank you. I hope you're doing well. Um, I, I continue to pray for you every single day. Um, you know, I keep, um, Connor, I love you. Sandra, I love you. Um, I try to keep all of my Bigfoot family in prayer. Um, I know that all of us are kind of going through a lot of, a, a lot of things lately and it's been difficult on all of us um to keep some of the channels even going because of illnesses and things like that and 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 I you know I keep all of you guys in prayer cuz just it's a lot going on in this world right now so um man of light is someone new to the channel thank you for coming welcome and glow I think you're new to the channel and thank you. Also welcome. And sugar, sugar britches. Miss Sharon Guy was here tonight. Been praying for Miss Sharon for a long time too. Um, Barb Sancy was here. Thanks, Barb, for coming by. I'm sorry I'm just getting to everybody right now. I, I apologize. I'm just I'm learning to balance it, guys. Um, who else was in here? Jean, Jean Hudson was here. Um, my gosh, there are so many of you. Thank you guys so much. I love y'all. Jeff Townsend was here. I saw he was here. Claude, thank you for coming by. Um, oh, wow. So much love tonight. Addie, Addie Overbay, thank you for coming. Um, I try, I'm trying to, let's see, Bobby, Bobby, thank you. I think you're new here and welcome. And I think that's about everybody. If I miss anyone, my apologies. I try to always, I try to get to all of you guys. And again, I love you guys. Thanks so much. And I'll see you next week. Solo show. So come with your questions and an open mind so we can discuss some fun stuff. Thanks. Have a good night.